Nebula is famous for its amazing emulations of classic studio gear, but up until now it's been very hard work for the average user to get the most out of it. Nebula uses unique and complex technology that has previously been understood by only a small number of dedicated computer audio geeks. Now, at last, this information is available for everyone in plain English. Professional is the full version of the course, and contains all the detailed information about using Nebula that the professional user demands. It contains all the lectures included in Starter, and builds on this to provide all the specialist knowledge to transform the way you work with Nebula and the results you can achieve. The course is comprised of 22 lectures and will take approximately two and a half hours to finish. And by the time you've completed it, you will learn how Nebula's brute force emulation works and what it can and can't achieve, the different ways that Nebula can sample hardware and why we would use each of them, how convolution impulse responses are used in reverb emulation, how sampling with Nebula differs from standard convolution, what the dynamic dimension is and how Nebula can sample it, the limitations of Nebula's technology. In the installation and setup section, the difference between Nebula and the Nebula Reverb version of the plugin and which version you should be using, how to install and delete Nebula libraries easily, how Nebula's latency settings affect its sound and performance, how to locate and edit the plugin's XML files to customise your install, how to create multiple versions of a plugin with different latencies, how to create alternative directories to store your Nebula libraries, how to add meaningful names to the default free character categories, how to add the ability to use timed kernels, how to adjust compressor look-ahead time with a head length. In the graphic user interface section, how to easily change GUI parameters using buttons, sliders, keyboard input and the modifier keys, how to save a program with a new name and change its category, all about the RTE, the flashing T, kernels, mono L slash stereo and spliff slash classic mode, about what the exact difference is between the frequency D and timed modes, about the kernel control grid and how spliff works, about using an analyzer and turning the distortion kernels on and off, about what every parameter on the global mast page does in detail. In the mixing with nebula section, the basics of gain staging and understanding how important it is in relation to Nebula, what good gain staging looks like, what exactly DBFS, RMS and DBU are, why use minus 18 DBFS instead of minus 20 DBFS or another similar value, about using the magic formula and measuring minus 18 DBFS accurately using a free insert channel plugin, about the accuracy and usability of Nebula's emulations, about how the core technology is used in preamps, consoles, EQ, reverb and compressors, and about each category of program including the examples of hardware types sampled, the general use of each category and a review of that accuracy and usability. Nebula Explained is made up mostly from video, which includes screencast examples of Nebula in action, callouts, graphics and photos to highlight key points, and specially created diagrams to make sure everything is easily understood. Every lecture starts by telling you exactly what you will learn in the lecture and ends with a detailed summary. At the end of each section there are multiple choice questions to help consolidate your learning. There is a link below to a PDF of the entire contents of the course. The entire course is hosted on the best online learning platform that is Udemy. Subscribing to the course via the official Learn Digital Audio website enables you to get a massive 50% off the Udemy price. Just click this link and enter your email. Enroll now and take your Nebula knowledge to the next level. Now, let's have a look at some of the videos so you can get a taster of the content. The mast page. This is where all the advanced global changes are made to the Nebula engine, all the advanced settings are displayed. There are some settings you need not be concerned with in detail. Here I will go in depth only with those that you should know about. If there is a star in front of a program, this means the change will not take effect until Nebula is reloaded. Version. Displays which version of Nebula you are running. About. Displays program credits. Mode. Guru or simple. Turns the mast page display on and off. This is to avoid terrifying new Nebula users. Color. Changes a basic element of a GUI color. Opt timed and opt freak D. These are the optimization modes used for the two different playback engines. They are set the first time you run Nebula to be the best for your computer. It's not advisable to adjust them. 
If you set an incompatible mode, it will either show a flashing exclamation mark next to it, or in the case of opt-timed mode, simply turn itself off. There is an optimization for CUDA available. This is NVIDIA's proprietary GPU acceleration. It requires additional files installed to work. CUDA and Nebula has not been developed for a long time, and I would consider it legacy now. This may be a controversial opinion, so I suggest you consult the Acoustica Audio forums if you're keen to get this feature running. FPU is another third-party legacy option to avoid. Intel IPP is the most current acceleration method, and recent Nebula versions have been moving towards maximising the potential of this. Prog rate. When edited, it overrides the current program's program rate. Listening to the change in prog rate. Here we can manually override the prog rate, but the way the program is configured may stop us being able to do this in a useful way. It gets interesting when the prog rate can be brought round to 2 milliseconds or lower. We may need to switch all our kernels to time mode to be able to do this. It depends how the program was sampled and set up. With prog rates under approximately 6 milliseconds come artifacts for dynamically sampled programs. Here is the Alex B Vintage Blue console. This is a dynamic program. I've sent a sine wave test tone through. Let's alter the prog rate and see what happens. In part one, we established that every Nebula program was different and needs its gain staging set by ear. While this is correct, we still want a consistent way to set up our project so that we start off with approximately the right input volume every time. If you already have some kind of gain staging system in place, then some of this section will be about stuff you already know and practice. Even so, I suggest you check it out to see how gain staging relates to Nebula in particular and compare how you do things now to my proposed system. As soon as we press play, we want to feed all our instances of Nebula a good volume of signal so that we will not lose the 3D sound or instantly overload. This should be our starting point. We do not want to have to waste time manually editing every instance of Nebula's gain just to get there. When you start mixing, you usually have all faders set to zero. We want to take that a step further and have every track's overall volume approximately the same as well. Unless you already have a gain staging system in place, having the faders at zero does not mean all the track levels will be the same. Here we see all the faders are at zero, but all the track volumes are different. What we want is this. Faders at zero, all the track volumes are as close to minus 18 dBFS as possible, and none are overloading the master. I promised you a magic formula that would revolutionise your door use if you are not already familiar with it. Minus 18 dBFS RMS equals 0 dBVU. This is the magic volume level that we're going to feed all our instances of Nebula as a starting point. This is the level all our tracks will start at before we touch the faders. Before we go into what it means, we must define what the abbreviations mean. What is dBFS? This stands for decibels full scale. Decibels, as I'm sure you know, is a measurement of volume. Full scale means it's on a scale between the loudest and the most quiet volume. Preamps and consoles. Core technology used in sampling. Dynamic layers, yes. Distortion kernels, yes. Editable parameters, no. Overview. A preamp program typically has no editable parameters. It is usually an emulation of a device's signal path. For example, many amplifier circuits give a pleasing sound and are often used to make things sound better or to make them sound as if they were recorded on an old analogue system. Often just sampling a device while the control set to off can capture the inherent tone or vibe of it. Pure digital systems are often accused of being sterile, too perfect. A preamp can add a flavour or colour that comes with a real-world device. Preamps can provide anything from lo-fi grunge to hi-fi sparkle depending on what they were sampled from. The Nebula category preamp does not have to be of only sampled amplifiers. It can be of anything really, but it's typically a device with no editable parameters. Things like analog tape are sampled as preamps as well. The dynamic layers and distortion kernels are what makes this type of emulation so accurate. Some developers provide types of programs that were traditionally sampled as EQ programs with editable parameters as preamps. This has the advantage of sampling with dynamic layers for added realism, but also means each EQ preset must be a different program that must be loaded. 
On the flip side, it's possible to sample an EQ program with editable parameters as a preamp to gain the dynamic layers. This result is the most accurate and CPU demanding type of program of all. This is generally too much for general use. Examples of hardware types sampled as a nebula preamp. Standalone microphone preamp. Console input. Analog tape. EQ or compressor with all controls turned to off to sample the tone of the unit. General use of preamp programs. Adding depth to digitally created sources. Driving the harmonics to fatten up a source sound. Emulating the sound of a piece of studio equipment. Using the frequency response of a preamp as an EQ curve. Accuracy and usability. Accuracy. Almost perfect emulation where a large amount of distortion is not needed. Accuracy. Lack of sampled compression characteristics. For example, this is what stops perfect tape emulation. Usability. As the original hardware has no editable parameters, it is essentially more usable than the original and that you don't need to plug it in. EQ. Core technology used in sampling. Dynamic layers. No. In 99% of cases. But it is possible and has been done. Distortion kernels. Yes. Often provided without as well to save CPU as a light or clean version.